Welcome into the PFF Two Minute Drill, the Monday edition. I'm Austin Gale with my guys Kevin Cole and Anthony Tresh. To kick things off, ESPN, it's ranking seasons across the board. It's ranking season for PFF, ranking season for ESPN. They dropped their top safeties here. We have Jamal Adams, Harrison Smith, Mika Fitzpatrick, Derwin James, and then Kevin Byer. That's the top five. But I want to ask you, Kevin, start with you. Who is your favorite safety in the NFL? I mean, I'm going with the guy who didn't even make it into that top five, and that's Tyron Matthew. And the reason that I'm going with him is that he was an all-pro last year, and what he did to bring that Kansas City Chiefs defense, especially the pass defense, to the next level. If you look at the stats last year um, and the names that they had in that secondary, there were a lot of questions going in. And what he's been able to do is fill in all the gaps with his versatility for everyone else. They're a team that went from... uh, 21st to 10th best in the NFL and EPA per drop back. And that's what really gave them enough on the defensive side of the ball, especially with the pass rush taking a step back with D Ford and others leaving. That gave them enough to really be at that championship level. So that's why I'm going with the Honey Badger. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the guy that didn't make the top five either, Eddie Jackson. I think the Chicago Bears offense was so bad. We just all forgot how good Eddie Jackson really was for him. I mean, going back to 2018, he had a 94.7 coverage grade. That's one of the best we've ever seen here at PFF. Eight interceptions. I think he combined for 14 pass breakups and interceptions. I mean, this guy was absolutely dominant on the football field. Kind of regressed a little bit in 2019, as expected. But he's bouncing back next year, and I think he's one of my favorite for sure. Hi, I'm a huge fan of Tyron Matthew and Eddie Jackson. On the podcast recently, Matthew said Eddie Jackson's the best cover for safety in the NFL, period. He did no, no arguments there. Big fan of Eddie Jackson. I'm actually going to go with Jamal Adams. I think what he can do from a versatility standpoint is super important. Talking about the NFL safety, the modern NFL safety, you have to do so many different things. And he has the athletic ability, football IQ, size, speed, all of these things to play in the box play down on the defensive line, rush the passer, and play deep in coverage, cover these bigger tight ends. I think that's what you need to be to be an elite safety in the NFL. ESPN got this one right. I like Jamal Adams. Austin, that was very brave of you going with the uh, the, the number one selection. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, let's, let's find a harder choice here. Now, everyone is suspecting, and everyone kind of knows at this point, that the Chiefs are going to be the number one team in the AFC West. The question is, amongst the other teams, who do you think is going to be the second best team? And especially with the new playoff format this year, this is someone who could sneak into the playoffs. So, Anthony, who do you think is going to be the second best team in the division? I'm going to have to roll with the Las Vegas Raiders. And I think at this point, the entire world is just kind of um, underrating Derek Carr at this point. I mean, this past year, he was ninth in PFF war, had the second lowest negatively graded play rate in the NFL among quarterbacks behind only Drew Brees. He fits this this offense perfectly. You know, he's not a Patrick Mahomes. He's not a Tom Brady, but he's Derek Carr. He fits John Gruden's system. And they look, they added playmakers across the board. You got Henry Ruggs. And I know we were kind of, we weren't really too happy with him taking Damon Arnett in the first round, but the guy is good. I mean, this past year, he had a cast on his hand and allowed under 50 yards in all but one game played. And then they added Prince of Mucamara too. I mean, granted, he's getting up there in age, but he's still an effective cornerback. I mean, they're upgrading across the board, especially too at off-ball linebacker. Got to mention that. Nick Kwiatkowski and Corey Littleton. So I think they added a lot of key pieces here. You know, I'm not saying they're going to the Super Bowl or going to make a playoff run by any means, but I think they're good enough, you know, to, out, to beat the Chargers and Broncos out for that second spot. Derek Carr is underrated now, according to PFS. Anthony Trash. wild to That's see. I think right. the big plays are what the concern with Derek Carr. I'm actually going to go with the Los Angeles Chargers. Sam Monson, an NFL analyst here at PFF, recently wrote a piece talking about Terod Taylor and how even if Justin Herbert doesn't play this year, he could put be put in a position to win football games in Los Angeles to the tune of being the second best team in the AFC West. It's because of what they built around him. I mean, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry. On the defensive side, Derwin James, Casey Hayward, Desmond King. There is a lot of talent on this Chargers football team. It just They just need a guy to facilitate it. And that's what Tyra Taylor has done throughout his career. Obviously, he had a big of a hiccup in Cleveland. But I think going to Los Angeles in the system with these playmakers, I think he could be good enough for the Chargers to be the second best team in the division. Yeah, I'm going to double down on the San Diego, uh, I mean, sorry, on the Los Angeles Chargers here. And the reason being is you're not projecting what they're going to do. You you know they have the talent level on, on defense. You're going to project someone like the Raiders to get better in a lot of areas. And then on offense, when you look at Taylor, you might think that he's a, he's a bottom-rung quarterback, but how he functioned in that Buffalo offense from 2015 to 2017, he played like a league average quarterback. He got them to the playoffs. Anthony Lynn was there on that coaching staff. He knows how to use him in this system. And I think if we could see a return there, they have everything else around them where you don't have to worry about taking a leap forward like you would with Drew Locke 
um, for the Denver Broncos or like you have to see for the Raiders. So I'm going with the Chargers. I don't know. Always ride with the better quarterback and I will ride or die with my guy Derek Carr. All right. So I got Sam Monson over at PFF.com. Wrote a monster piece ranking all 32 defensive lines. So guys, what is your biggest takeaway or surprise from this? At first, I wanted to bring the Steelers down from their top spot, but I couldn't do it. TJ Watt and Cameron Hayward were two of the three highest graded def defensive linemen this past season. What I am going to do is I want the Saints to move up. 13th on PFS defensive line rankings. I think Sheldon Rankins is underrated, has missed a lot of time due to injury. David Onyemata is a very underrated defensive player as well. Canadian board from Manitoba. And then Cameron Jordan is still one of the most underrated players in the NFL. Not defensive linemen, not just defensive players. Overall, the NFL. Cameron Jordan is severely underrated and we're coming off a year where Marcus Davenport maybe actually looks worth trading up those two picks to go get him. I think the Saints team overall, Saints defensive line is very underrated. I think they're better than that 13 spot. Yeah, I'm going to go with the team that's overrated and that is the Washington football team at number three overall. Now, we love Chase Young. We think he's the best defender that we've seen coming out of college of anyone that we've graded. But will he be that all pro, that perennial all pro as a rookie? And my guess is no. If you look at some research that we've done on our research development team, uh, Timo Riske, when he did a piece about the development of players, edge players were the slowest to develop, had the worst performance versus the rest of their career in their rookie seasons. So if we see that Young's gonna be a little bit slower to develop, it's pretty unlikely that a team that was grading in the bottom half um, as far as pass rush and defense last year is going to jump up right up into that top five. So I'm gonna say it's gonna take at least another year for Washington to make that leap. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the San Francisco 49ers not being number one here. I mean, they got Nick Bosa the last year. He was the 11th highest graded edge rusher. And then you have Eric Armstead, too. He was the third highest graded edge rusher. And D Ford, granted, he didn't play a whole lot. But when he was on the field, he was his old dominant self. Then they added Javon Kinlaw in the NFL draft. I know we probably would have liked to see him go. Jerry Judy there. That would have been very fun to watch. But Javon Kinlaw is a very special player. We had him higher than Derek Brown, who went top 10 in the actual NFL draft. And, you know, when I was talking with him at the combine, I asked him a question about his pass rush skill set. He said that he he's got a long ways to go and that in college he was just walking dudes back and you watch him he was just walking dudes back because he's that powerful and he just he needs to get some pass rush moves some good coaching and that's exactly what he's going to get in san francisco so i think this th defensive line is by far the best in the nfl you want to get rid of me and get back to more great pff youtube content all you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe thanks for watching <laughs>